From 1979, Junior Achievement Bahamas has fostered entrepreneurship, work readiness, and financial literacy into the minds of young people. This year, JA Bahamas celebrates 40 years of inspiring and preparing young people to succeed in a global economy. Through hands-on learning and the belief in the boundless potential of young people, JA will continue to ignite the present for tomorrow's future. Jerome Sawyer, I'm the executive producer at RTV Cable Bahamas and I am JA. Hello and welcome to JA Talks. Our guest today is Mr. Jerome Sawyer. Mr. Sawyer, how long were you in Junior Achievement? Um, I spent a year in Junior Achievement. Um, it was a short time, I guess, when you look at it in relative terms. But it was a significant period of time, and that was back in 1987. 87. Do you remember when you stopped JA? Um, I think I would have come out in 1988, because that's the year I graduated um, from, from high school. And can you remember why you joined? Oh, man. Um, funny story. Um, I had always heard of JA, and it really looked like something that I didn't want to do. Let me say that. But I remember my mother saying to me at the time that this was an opportunity for you to get into something that will help you later in life. And even at that point, I think I shrugged it off. And then when the opportunity came at school, and they were talking about joining, all my friends joined. <laughs> and I realized if they were joining, then this was probably something I should at least go and learn about. And that's pretty typical for young people. I mean, you get involved in stuff because you see everybody else doing. Yeah. Um, and so that's how I got involved. But I, I never, I never regretted it. I remember from the very first day, I thought, okay, this makes sense. Which sponsoring, well, which counseling firm were you a part of? Uh, at the time, uh, the Bahamas Development Bank um, was the firm. I, I can't remember which day we met, but we used to meet um, in the Churchill Building which is where the bank was. Uh, we met in the evenings, um, but I don't remember which day we met, but it was the Bahamas Development Bank. Can you remember any other counseling firms that sponsored you at the time? Oh, that's a toughie. Um, I think Betelco had a company back then, I think. Um, and there were some accounting firms. Again. It was strange because I remember looking at the list and for some reason, I was drawn to that, that firm, because I think at that time, that was one of the more prominent ones. And it was, it was a long list to get in, I remember. I mean, all of my friends got in, so that was good. Mm -hmm. uh, what were your experiences like with your advisors? What role did they play? Well, I have to tell you, it was the first opportunity that I had to really understand how a company was set up. And I think it was good because at the time I was taking commerce in school. And so theoretically I was learning about these things, but I got to see them in practical terms. And our advisors at the time were very instrumental in helping us to understand the various divisions and departments and understanding the roles um, that we would take on even before we you know, um, elected officers. And then it, it was really good because that was the first time that I understood or really got to understand how an actual company would run. What was finance, what was the role of the president, even how marketing worked, production. And all of these things, even today, I can recall. Um, and it was, it really was a great experience because I learned a lot. And can you tell us about your most memorable moment that you had in GAS oh, Achiever? Oh, oh, oh. Does it have to be a good one? <laughs> um, I'll tell you the thing that I was most proud of. Uh, our company that year was a Company of the Year. Yeah. And I remember when it was announced, I think we were in the, you don't remember this, it was the Cable Beach Hotel back then, I think. You didn't know, it's now in Malia. Um, <laughs> but I remember, anyway, I remember we got dressed up and went to the banquet um, and when they announced Company of the Year, and our company's called Consumer's Choice, I remember we all were so elated. 
um, because I mean at that point I guess we were working in silos we worked we did what we had to do um, our advisors were very much involved um, and we didn't think that I, I, I don't know it was weird because I didn't think that we were working in our minds to become company of the year we just worked hard and we were serious about what we you know what we were doing um, and to see it pay off in such a great way I think um, it gave me an immense sense of pride to know that I was in some small way responsible for this great achievement. Has your exposure to junior achievement helped you in your life and career in any way? Most definitely. Um, even today, the principles of running a business um, still resonate with me all these years later. Even when I went to start my own small business, some of what I learned in J.A. Um, I was able to apply. I remember going to college um, and in some of my intro to business classes and uh, some of my other business related classes, even though I was a journalism major, I took business. But I remember how easy it was for me to grasp information because I had already lived it. I already understood um, so many aspects of setting up and running a business and I every time I reflect on my J experience it's always a pleasant one uh, because despite having fun which is what we did a lot of we learned a lot and that's one of the things I, I admired and I cherish about it because even though we were working, we were having fun. And, you know, as youngsters, I, you know, I tell you before we started, I almost get kicked out from this baby. Um, <laughs> my brother never knew that. Um, but, you know, we were kids. But, despite, you know, and, and even then I learned in that moment that there are consequences for your actions. And if you can't be in line with what's happening in the business, you're going to have to leave. You know, and so, yeah, even today I, I still reflect and... I can still remember, and I'm still benefiting from a lot of what I learned. Mrs. Sawyer, what message would you like to leave with students who may consider joining the organization, or volunteers, or people who may consider becoming advisors? I think you need only look around to see the benefits of junior achievement. There are thousands of young people in this country who have benefited, myself from their interaction. And for me, that should be enough to inspire and continue to inspire people um, to sign up their children, their nieces, their nephews, their neighbors, and for young people to look at this and say, well, if he could have come to the program, or she could have come to the program, um, or they could have come to the program, and look at the level of success that they've achieved, there is something there for me. So I say to everyone who was involved, you need only look at the history. Look at what this organization has already done. And that should be enough to inspire you, to get involved, um, to remain involved if you're already uh, involved with it, and then continue to support. Even if you can't physically support, um, support it because it is critical. My name is Lyndon Waller, CEO and founder of Quenchers, and I am J.A. And I am J.A. I am J.A. I am J.A. My name is Moses Taylor, and I am CEO and founder of Red Sea Bahamas, and I am J.A. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy, saw your boy, but him a comedian, actor, entertainer, MC, all kinds of different things. Nice a former J.A. advisor. And look here, I am J.A. I'm Clint Watson, broadcast journalist and news director at Eyewitness News. I am J.A.